it's been over a month into Tinubu's uh, administration. And um, despite the fact that he started feeling the heat from the gigantic burden of governance and uh, the blowback from the aggressive removal of the petroleum sub subsidy uh, a month ahead of schedule uh, manifested the high prices and furious citizenry. And you, we've got also had conflicted uh, with reports of 16 15 trillion worth of abandoned projects scattered across the country, 11 trillion wasted in 30 years on the moribund state owned refineries, just to mention a few of the issues. And in the wild wind, Nigerians actually expected, had great expectations and hopes of change. It's time to critically assess his performance and assess whether he's truly delivering on his promises. DJ you it's a pleasure having you on Sahara TV again. Thank you for having me, Sarah, for us again. DG, let's get your assessment of uh, Tinobu's presidency so far. How will you ever have sex assessed it? Yes, basically, there's nothing to assess because he hasn't done anything. He has not formulated a cabinet. He has practically done nothing. You know, I saw Nasri El Fire and a few psycho fans here and there commending him and singing his praise. And I'm like, oh my God, Nigeria is so full of funny people. Uh, you know, because the man has practically done nothing. But I understand that the the precarious situation that the country has found itself in, a, a situation where Buhari has so lowered the bar, that now sacking people or appointing people has become an achievement. You know? So we, we have really gotten to the barest minimum as a nation. You know, and unfortunately, uh, this is a very sad reality. Uh, but be that as it may, you know, I'm of the view that until he forms a cabinet, uh, you know, set out clear policies, economic policies, social policies, and other policies, then one cannot critically assess his government because he has practically done nothing. Mm -hmm. He has not even consulted boards of uh, government agencies, still working with the old boards, uh, considering the fact that Buhari has taken back the taking the country about 70 years, you know, it will take some time for any critical analysis to be really, uh, to really be done in this uh, view. Uh, additionally, I also feel that um, he, he has not come up with any strong policies or direction yet. Uh, look at even just a few days ago, uh, one of the African countries banned Nigerian passport holders from visiting country. The, uh, Nigeria has been banned for over two years, almost three years from going to Dubai and several other diplomatic roles. There's no eco diplomatic policy. There's no economic policy. All he has just come is to uh, hurriedly remove first subsidy, uh, which has not turned out to be an, a complete mistake. Uh, also, his declaration about uh, uh, policy on the Naira has affected the Naira. You can see now that the Naira is trading over as I said, a lega tender, the Naira is trading over 800 Naira to $1, and the pound is over 1,000 uh, Naira to one pound. You know? So the economy is going seriously under. And uh, anyone praising Tinubu for whatever, uh, the person is, you know, is just being uh, mischievous, in my view. Now, let me, let me get your opinion on this. One of the chief concerns that have emerged in Tinubu's uh, inauguration and uh, ascendancy is his leadership style. Uh, while he promised a more inclusive and consultative approach, the reality has actually been different um, considering the fact that he appears to rely heavily on a small circle of uh, advisors, many of whom are longtime allies. And this has raised questions about the true extent of his commitment to broad based governance and representation of diverse interests within the Nigerian population. And uh, do, do you expect, see, expect something different from his ministerialists? Yeah, ordinarily you expect something different, but look at how he has started. He has started so poorly. Uh, you discover that his story is, is actually uh, driving on the path of where he drove uh, in the last eight years. He started by uh, carrying out some unconstitutional acts. Yes, rightly he suspended the CBN governor, 
but he has detained him almost infinitely at the DSS headquarters, which is an unconstitutional act. He has also uh, removed the EFC chairman and detaining him perpetually at the DSS office. These are all unconstitutional acts. Uh, and this is the a, 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 a road to perdition and tyranny, like we witnessed in the lab in the previous eight years, uh, Barry Ujim. Again, uh, the only appointment that he has done so far is he appointed 20 people, uh, personal aides. 15 of those are Yorubas, you know, and that is uh, bigotry and then the partisan at its peak. You know, uh, just rightly, like you said, he has a close circle of uh, Yoruba uh, people with few northerners here and there that he relies on. However, he must realize that he's governing uh, the six geopolitical zones and uh, over 200 million Nigerians. He's governing both those who voted for him and those who did not vote for him. He's governing all political parties. This is not, not a, a Lagos affair. This is not a Southwest affair. This is not a Yoruba affair. You know, and I, I see some people defending him at 2015, Yoruba out of 28, and they're saying, oh, because Buhari did it. It is the same analogy of the obedience that because uh, APC failed Muslim Muslim, therefore it is, it is good and okay to be moving from church to church and running a religious campaign. You cannot say because uh, someone did what is wrong. You too, you now begin to do uh, the same thing, and you even proceed to justify sin. So Tinubu must do better. You know he must expand his te tentacles and he must reach out to all uh, uh, races, all people outside the country, people within the country, all tribes, all ethnic groups, all religious groups. Carry everyone along. Uh, make everyone believe again in the country. You know, and think outside the box. Now, you, earlier on in your comments, uh, you, you mentioned the fact that uh, he's uh, backed up on uh, taking up uh, some unconstitutional uh, actions vis-à-vis uh, -vis the arrest of the CBN, continuous detention of the CBN gov former CBN governor, Godwin Emefiele, as well as the EFCC chairman. How worried should Nigerians be? And what does this point to uh, as far as his administration is concerned for the next four years? Are we going to see another reign of tyranny? Yes, uh, it appears so that Nigerians are going to witness another reign of tyranny for another four years. We very unfortunate. Uh, there's nothing wrong in arresting people who have been suspected to have committed uh, any offense or breach of the oath of their office. However, people must be um, tried within the ambit of the law. People must not be put beneath the law. You know, the law must remain the guiding principle upon which governance is uh, built. Uh, and, you know, the DG of SSS must stop all these abuse of office. Uh, and President Mawad, uh, President uh, but I meant, you know, we must stop supporting him in unconstitutional acts. The DSS has no right arresting politicians for corruption. You know, that is outside their mandate. You know, just um, a few days ago, Senator Yari, Amla Yari, was arrested uh, by DSS, shamelessly so. Uh, and he, we all know the reason why he was arrested, because he dared to contest against the another candidate of the president. And uh, and um, it is a democracy, for God's sake. We are not running a one-party state. Even in a one-party state, the DSS should not be behaving the way they are. The DSS is not a political party. You know, the DSS is not the political arm of the APC. So I don't know why the DSS is stood so low to be used by politicians to set a political scores. So the Tinubu government, Tinubu who was once in exile, who ran away from autocracy, should not be running a government that is uh, tyrannical in nature. You know, this should not be a continuation of the Bali ETR regime. Things must be done differently. You know, people must embrace democracy. You cannot, in uh, one hand, be wanting to enjoy the dividends of democracy, and in the other hand, you are behaving like a military uh, ruler, maximum ruler. You know, so uh, the, we, we do not want to have another four years of paradoxical. Uh, regime where impunity is the order of the day. Now, for over four years, 
the DSS has acted lawlessly under the leadership of the uh, of the agent boss uh, Yusuf Bichi, um, and the concerns are being raised. I mean, considering the fact that Tinubu continues to keep, I mean, this nepotistic and uh, incompetent uh, Yusuf Bichi to keep doing dirty jobs for him. Uh, this was a statement credited to Moyele Shore. I mean, why your opinion is Tinubu keeping? Uh, Yusuf Bichi are still, uh, despite uh, having sacked the uh, service chiefs, uh, why is Yusuf Bichi uh, not, not being sacked? Yeah, Yusuf Bichi uh, is the only one who did not join the Buhari Kabal in the attempt to uh, make uh, Tinubu's victory uh, impossible. You know, he seemed to be the only one who was on the side of Tinubu who he showed that um, he was not playing the economic sabotage or the security sabotage game with them. Uh, and also, he he appeared to have been someone who uh, did not actively participate in um, ensuring that the Tinubu's uh, election uh, goal was cuttled during the recently concluded election. And I think that's the reason why uh, President Tinubu is keeping him. Also, I, I think that um, uh, just like I know personally that uh, he's keeping him out of loyalty or supposed loyalty or supposed help that he rendered towards the build up to his election. I, 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 I heard that he had promised that if he wins, he will not sack him and keep him for some time and subsequently let him retire. So uh, that is uh, the only explanation because this is someone who has, who, you know, majority of the tyrannical acts within the last eight years, he was one of the key major arrowheads mm. of this act. Mm. I, I do not understand why, if you want to uh, really sanitize the system, why you continue to keep someone like that around. Now, another area of contention is the pace of Tinubu's uh, policy implementation and despite making grandiose promises uh, uh, with regards to issues such as the fight against corruption and economic reforms uh, nigerians have been disappointed so far i mean shouldn't uh, the president uh, uh, demonstrate more unyielding commitment to these areas at this time and um, having fallen short of uh, nigerians expectations yeah, I, I don't see Tinubu personally as someone that will fight any corruption, going by his history with uh, romance with corruption. You know, and um, Nigeria is between the devil and the deep blue sea. If you hmm. see someone like this and you elect him, then what else do you expect? Anyone expecting Tinubu to fight corruption is uh, politically naive. Hmm. Uh, this, is someone, this is someone who, by his conduct, you know, has embraced corruption over the years, you know, and um, uh, you can see majority of the corrupt people da all dancing around the villa almost daily. James Boris and, you know, they are just having fun. You know, these guys are having fun. So anybody expecting, they, they will just persecute few enemies uh, and try to crush the opposition. When terms of fighting corruption, now nah, this, this government cannot do anything, <laughs> unfortunately. That's sad. Um what steps do you uh, believe President Tinubu will take to address the security challenges Nigeria currently faces? We have the issues of uh, insurgency, banditry, and kidnapping. Not to talk of the recent killings in Plateau, as well as the Southeast uh, uh, um, issues, I mean, insecurity in the Southeast. Uh, so far, what's your assessment and where should he be redirecting his uh, uh, actions at this point in time? Yes, I, I sincerely think that um, in terms of the security thing, uh, he has shown he has the political will. Whether he'll be able to pull through is another thing, especially with the appointment of Nori Badu, uh, a former police chief. Uh, ordinarily, uh, with the pressure that was mounted on the president from former military generals, former heads of states, you know, he still went ahead and, uh, and appointed Nori Badu. That is a lot of political will. You know, uh, however, I, uh, how, whether that political will be translate into results is another thing. 
Yeah. You know, but however, I'm hoping that the, the political will will actually translate into something progressive and we can be able to overcome our security challenges in the country. Uh, having said that, you know, one, we naturally expect that uh, under the Tinubu administration, mm -hmm. uh, the office of the National Security Advisor and the service chiefs will not be a political entitlement. You know, that once people fail to perform, we should sack them and keep sacking them until we get the right people at the hands of affairs. Uh, it is my hope and belief is one of the reasons, the contributory reasons why the security got so bad under the President Mahmoud Bari is that people were not being sacked and people were not being queried or questioned. People felt so comfortable uh, doing nothing in office. Since Buhari will neither sack nor reprimand them, they felt they can continue, you know, to act in such ways, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why uh, we had what we had. So the Tinubu government was, you know, do something different, you know, from what was obtaining under the Buhari ATS uh, regime. And they must physically engage with stakeholders, they must engage with uh, communities, religious leaders, traditional rulers, uh, civil rights movements in host communities and other critical stakeholders to restore normalcy. For the Southeast issue, Southeast leaders must rise to the occasion. Uh, they must rise to the occasion in the sense that they, it, it is their zone and they must pick up in such a way that, you know, activities happening in their zone are condemned. People should not be uh, afraid of criminal elements. I know that they are afraid of maybe reprisal attacks and all that. However, you know, this was how people uh, also aided Boko Haram by their silence when it started. And today the rest is history. Uh, President Tinubu must also release Namdekan, keeping him in custody achieves nothing, absolutely nothing. You know, because if you release him, you de-escalate the situation, uh, you know, and you, you can be able to now, you can even put, put some stringent bill conditions to him so that he doesn't have scorn this time around. You can even restrict him to Abuja. After all, Omar El who did nothing, was restricted to Abuja, you know, for uh, about some years. And, 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 you know, so that we can just have normalcy restored to the Southeast. Situation where the economic activities uh, in the Southeast is being crippled weekly is, is just not acceptable. Again, members of IPOB and those carrying us sit out must also embrace peace, you know, and give peace a chance, you know, in the zone. Now, let me, let me also get your view on this. I mean, considering the, that Nigeria is experiencing high levels of uh, inflation, uh, what uh, steps do you predict President Tinubu will take to stabilize the economy and uh, control inflation rate? Yeah, the, the main factor driving inflation rates to the roof is the, the horrid removal of subsidy. Very simple, you know. You cannot, Nigeria is a fuel dependent economy. Already our inflation rates are already so high and you remove fuel without getting the refineries to work. Uh, you have not privatized the refineries, uh, the old refineries, you have not sold them. They are not, they are not generating any income. NMPC is not uh, crediting the federation accounts. So why are you keeping the refineries? Is that you want to do full privatization and regulate the sector or you don't want to? You know, even advanced nations in the world still privatize, still subsidize, sorry, uh, fuel and other uh, education and other crit critical uh, sectors of the economies, uh, you know, for their societal members. And so uh, if you want to lower inflation, you cannot continue to put pressure on the economy, which is exactly what uh, the removal of subsidy has done. You know, in my view, I would have, it would be to not be right, uh, advisable for the president to first you know, uh, allow the refineries work. You know, there's no rush. Allow the refineries work, you know, privatize the old ones that are not working. If your money and my money is in the refineries, if they are sold and privatized, they will start working. It's government who would not allow the refineries to work. Uh, it is unimaginable that our, our refineries cannot work, but they've gone to build the refinery for Dangote and they want that one to work. So it's just an irony. And it's unbelievable that this is Nigeria for you. Unbelievable indeed. Um, let's also look at uh, 
Tinubu's foreign policy approach. Uh, recently, he made a statement in a, as a uh, chairman of the uh, of ECOWAS, uh, uh, the, talking about coups that uh, coups will never be al will no longer be allowed in uh, uh, in the, way, the West African sub region. Uh, what changes do you expect him to make beyond this? And uh, how, how do you think he will um, uh, um, bridge the gap in terms of uh, relations, international relationships or alliances that you think he, he should be prioritizing at this point in time? Well, generally speaking, I don't see how Tinubu is going to uh, stop coups in Africa. I don't see. I think he was just playing to the gallery, basically. Uh, because all our neighbors have <laughs> carried out coups, Mali, all, all of them. And there's no political will to even condemn them. You haven't condemned coup plotters all around us. You are saying that coups will no longer be tolerated in Africa. It's you know, just a political statement, you know, not backed by any empirical evidence uh, to how Nigeria can play any role. Is in Nigeria that the fellow African nations are banning us from coming to their country. Okay. And ordinary Dubai, stopping our citizens from trading or going to, that's going to prevent coups in Africa. You know, so this is just uh, playing to the gallery. Nothing can show that um, this wishful thinking can become a reality, you know, anytime soon. Again, Tinubu does not really have a solid uh, foreign policy uh, blueprint or roadmap that one can hold him accountable on, you know, because vis-a-vis -vis during the campaigns, there was so much, a lot of vagueness in terms of uh, foreign policy direction and issues. However, one of the great ways of um, ensuring that there's a solid uh, foreign policy program is to make sure that the Minister of Foreign Affairs be someone who is extremely knowledgeable in uh, diplomacy, you know, and international political. You know, if that can be gotten right, then, you know, uh, in the next, we can start building uh, for nations to respect Nigeria and Nigerians, you know, within the ambit of international law, and within the Committee of Nations, you know, in no distant time. But for the moment, you know, much needs to be desired. Let me ask this final question, and that has to do with the presidential election tribunal, uh, presidential election petition tribunal, so to, uh, to put it right, and, um, which is uh, already almost rounding up, so to speak. Uh, um, what are your expectations, and do you foresee a rerun? Yeah, I have no expectations of the election petition tribunal because you know there's really nothing that I, I keep coming out of the tribunal. There's not going to be any rerun, you know, and I'm not trying to be a prophet of doom. Law is about what you can prove, not about emotions. Uh, the, the three grounds for which. Uh, a candidate who has won an election uh, will lose uh, being stipulated in the Electoral Act. Uh, number one ground is non-qualification. Number two ground is when there has been uh, corruption, fraud, you know, and violence and all that. And, uh, and even that second ground must be significant enough, must be substantial enough you know, and um, it must be substantial to have tilt the results in a particular uh, zone or in a particular way. You know, what I think has been able to, uh, part of the petitioners are able to establish at the election petition tribunal is that there were some manipulations in river states or, and, and, and thereabout, you know, and, and that's so insignificant uh, to change any outcome of any election, you know, as the case may be. Very unfortunate, but the, the, the petitioners were not serious about their petition from the things I have seen and the processes filed. You know, they were busy going around in circles about uh, non qualification, which was the first ground, about Guinean passport and all these other passports and all these things about forfeiture. Forfeiture is not one of the grounds for disqualification of a candidate. You know, uh, in the constitution, the constitution has listed all the grounds for this qualification. You know, for future, it's not even when somebody has been convicted. The constitution said ten years. 
you know, so these guys they didn't just do their work well you know then the last ground uh, of an election is when the winner you know has not scored a lawful the no the total his, the total number of lawful casted votes he has not met the requirements and you know this pedestrian argument of 25 percent in fct so laughable you know uh, very very childish and laughable you know that lawyers are engaging in this kind of argument is completely shameful you know to to insinuate that the votes of the federal capital territory are more superior than the votes of 36 other states in the country shows you the level of decay in our educational system you know and then so i, I sincerely do not see anything coming out of the election tribunal and then uh, you know uh, the opposition like i had won during the election they're the ones that handed over victory to Tinubu. and uh, you can see that they even now that they've handed over power, they refuse to produce, the opposition refused to produce even minority leaders in the Senate and the House of Reps. It was from the wicked that produced minority leader in both the Senate and House of Reps. Nobody okay. whose one leg is already in the APP. So these people are not ready to do opposition, you know, and um, it's going to be four long years ahead, unfortunately. Thank you for your insightful analysis. We really appreciate it a lot. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure.